Hello there. I didn't see you. Did you ever want to lose sleep at night about the amount of work you have in the morning? Did you ever want to wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh my gosh, I didn't send that invoice to that person. Oh my gosh, where's that contract I was supposed to send yesterday? Did you ever want to wonder and worry about how you're going to pay the bills and everything else that you have to do as a human being in this world because it's a slow month for you? Well, if that sounds like something that really is a great way to live, small business ownership is for you. <laughs> I promise it's not that bad, guys. I'm just in the busy season. And I'm losing it. It's like a lot to do. But when it comes to slow season, I'm gonna be sitting here like, oh man, remember all those things? I was like, too many emails. I'm like, where's the emails at? I want these emails. So it's a balance, right? In this video today, I'm gonna to be talking about three things that I did not know starting out as a freelancer or business owner. And three things that really, really have changed the way I live my life and also control my life on the sidelines. Because if you just let people have every second of you, man, you're gonna get run over. So. These are some great things you need to keep in mind. Watch all three, really understand them, and please comment below in the comments if you have any questions and what kind of business you're looking to start. To be honest, business ownership is really difficult and it is worth it. You get a lot of cool benefits. Um, you get to just work for yourself and pave your own path in this world and it's exciting and it's hard and it's everything under the sun, but there are some things I really think that I've learned being a freelancer and a business owner that I otherwise wouldn't really have learned if I was nine to five or wouldn't have to work in this manner and consider these things. So a little bit about me, I'm actually a second business owner. Like I've had a business two times, I guess I could say. And my first one was a photography company. I uh, lived in Florida back in the day and I moved it across country and was going great, had a studio, all that fun stuff. And uh, a wildfire took me out and at that time, I had two ways to go. I could decide to go with it or I could just rebuild. I decided to just go with it and move on from the career because honestly, I wasn't that happy in it. It wasn't something that really resonated with me anymore as much as it used to. So I thought, eh, let's get rid of this. Let's find something new. So flash forward a couple of years of basically working odd jobs, trying to figure it out, all that stuff. I got a really random opportunity to work with animals and I've always been an animal lover. I have had reptiles ever since I can remember. I've kept caught like lizards with the boys when I was younger. So I love animals and I was like, uh, yeah, okay, we're doing this. We're going to try this, um, with this company is great and everything. Um, but I just seen flaws. I saw, okay, I can do this better and I can be this person when they're not doing this and all this stuff. And so I thought, okay, after 2020, I'm going to do my own thing, my own business, because I had my Instagram snakes on Sam fairly developed and everything else. So I thought it was the right time. The first thing that I wasn't prepared for was how hard I really have to work. It's a lot. And I grew up, both my parents had businesses. So I saw them, you know, kind of grinding and their irregular schedules and everything. And uh, to me, that was fairly normal. But it wasn't until I started my own businesses that I really understood just how hard it was. So there's times where I'm working till 11 o'clock at night. There's plenty of times where I can't do this that I want to do or I would like to go here, but I have to do this. People will be calling me and emailing me every hour of the day. Like I've had Saturdays before where people at like eight o'clock on a Saturday is trying to book a show with me. And so it does get kind of difficult to handle everything yourself. I mean, yes, you can mitigate some of this through getting help, getting someone on the side, but I'm not at that point. You know, I'm not at that place to where I can pay someone a salary to do this stuff for me. It's me, I'm a solo show. And so for the time being, I'm kind of losing my mind during the busy seasons. Um, that being said, I have been able to set some parameters for myself in order not to lose my mind as much as I normally do. There are times where I'm still struggling not to like go crazy, but there are some things that has helped ease it. Unless it's something that is mandatory at that moment that really needs to be done, like a contract needs to go out or I'm not gonna get paid, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, there are hours of the day where I will respond to people and I will get back to them. Other than that, I kind of put my phone aside. I think something that I could do better is maybe get another phone because right now everything's together. So it's kind of just like constantly coming at me and it's really exhausting, but 
there are some ways that you can mitigate that. And so you need to be aware of that, not like take it as like, I can't do this, or I'm not going to respond to this person. Just really get firm because people will try to contact you every hour of the day. They'll try to find ways to email you and, you know, and, and they want to hear from you. Sometimes they'll email you multiple times. And it's like, it's, it's like seven o'clock. I'm not on duty. So that's something to keep in mind and something to really get strict about. And um, also sometimes to be flexible with when there is a time period that something needs to be done in a quick amount of time. The second thing I wasn't quite prepared for was how methodical I had to be as a business owner. So what I mean by that is I didn't realize how many rules and how many things I had to set in place and also the way I had to think in order to do things that would help me grow my business and also stay sane myself, because there's a lot of little pieces you're always dealing with and you're always thinking about as a business owner. For example, it's very easy to just go and like be like, oh, I'm starting a business, let's spend and spend and buy everything for my business and be like, you know, do you know how many times I've told myself, oh yeah, I don't need that new animal, but I'm a business owner, I should get that animal. And I make excuses for myself. I started doing that until later I realized that's not really beneficial. Like I'm not gonna actually use that animal in a show. It's more of just, I want it. <laughs> so there's certain things like that where you need to be really methodical about your spending and what you're putting into it and be open to the growth of it and then expand when you're ready to new um, investments and things in your business. So you have to be really thoughtful and also think of, okay, well, you know, what do I really need? Do I really need this right now? Or is this something that I just would like or seems glitzy and glam or whatever it is? Things like, you know, um, software to help track your business or a scheduling system, a website, all those things are very important. However, you don't have to do them crazy expensive. You don't have to go to a designer starting out. Another thing I had to consider too is how I would allow people to reach me. So I would say, this is a good way to reach me. This is not a good way to reach me. On my phone, I say, hey, if you call me, I might not get back to you as quickly as if you text me, because for me, I know that if you call me, I'm going to forget what you say. It's just like extra work on my part. I try to make it easy, say, hey, text me. So I have it on a piece of paper, basically. And well, I guess a text message and I can look back at it and refresh my memory if I have any questions. So that's something that's helped me. And you really need to be thoughtful and methodical with those things too. So your workflow is nice and even, and you're not going back and rechecking, and you're not doing this and you're not doing that. It makes it really difficult when you have to keep looking back at things when you can be spending your time moving forward rather than just rehashing what you did before. The third thing I wasn't quite prepared for was how big of an impact it would have on my social life. So I'm not a huge extrovert. Um, I do like to talk to people. I am social in that way, but I'm not someone who has to always like, you know, go to parties and this and that. So luckily that has been helpful to me, but I still have felt a lot of pain in the fact that there's plenty of times where my friends are getting together or people are hanging out and I miss out on that. Or I have to sacrifice, you know, not going to something because I have work. It happens all the time. And as a business owner, you know, your ultimate goal, your ultimate goal is to create financial security, create financial freedom. And if you're not making that sacrifice and if you don't go ahead and say, hey, listen, like in the meantime, this sucks, but later on, this is gonna be awesome. And you're not having that outlook for the long term, you're just not gonna succeed in it. Like you have to make a lot of sacrifices in your social life, which is really unfortunate. You're gonna to have to do it differently. Doesn't mean you can't do a talk to your friends or that you just like shut yourself off to the world, but it does mean that you need to find ways to cope and new ways to communicate with your friends that still says, hey, I'm here, but obviously it's a little bit different than you'd like it to be. For example, I'm not too in tune with the day-to-day -day a lot of my friends just because I'm so everywhere else in my mind with work and everything. And I feel terrible about that. Like I want to be a better friend. However, I try to, you know, be connected with them on social media, watch what they're doing, see where they're at, you know, be interested in their life there and um, just try to be a better friend in that respect. There are times where I do sacrifice my work to go to a wedding or to go on a trip with them. And that's something that I make, you know, a very conscious decision based on, you know, my income and what I'm making that month and all that, because those things, like obviously going on a trip, I'm spending money versus making money. And you have to make sure that you're able to get through the dry times of your business when things start going a little slower and you make that money while you have it. Moving forward with my business, I'm looking to actually do more, but also work less. And so that's something that is a big theme in my life. I'm always thinking, how can I make more, but work less? So I can have that fun. So I can go out with my friends and I can know that in the background, I'm earning that money. I think that's always something smart to think of because everyone wants to make passive income. I know passive income is this huge, huge 
conversation that we hear constantly online and from friends and this and that, but how can we do that uh, passive income? Because passive income takes a lot of work up front. Like it doesn't just come because you like, you know, wrote something down and then there it is. It's like, you have to do all the legwork. You have to do all the videos or if it's, you know, some kind of product line, you have to make those products. You have to design those products. You have to go and do a lot of work in the beginning with no money earned and then possibly make money later on. So there are a lot of risks involved in all of this, but the financial freedom, the freedom of your life, the structure, and also being able to do something freaking fun, it's so worth it. Like I wouldn't do it any other way. And it's challenging at times, like right now, like I've said, I'm having a really hard time with it all, but I know that I'm much happier as a person than if I'm just doing the nine to five. Nine to five has never been for me. I don't understand it. And I look at people who do nine to five and I'm like, I'm kind of jealous because that looks really nice. It looks simple. It looks enjoyable. And um, you still make a great living and you have a great life. But for some of us out there, like you and I, we're just not cut out for it. And, you know, these are kind of some things that I'd like to bring to your attention so you can go ahead and get started on a really strong foot and kill it out there.